For almost five centuries, the seas off the Canadian island of Newfoundland constituted the richest fishing grounds in the world. But in 1992, the cod disappeared almost overnight as a result of decades of overfishing. The region was devastated by the collapse of the fishing industry. In spite of $26 billion in government aid, 70,000 people have left the province in the past decade, and cod stocks show no sign of recovering. One of the lessons of the cod collapse is that traditional ways of measuring wealth, such as gross domestic product, can be misleading. GDP is meaningless if it's, uh, if it's based upon a non-sustainable resource because it's not a measure of well-being, it's a measure of using wealth, of consuming wealth that you had as opposed to uh, earning income from your capital assets. GDP is the most well-known measure of economic performance in the world. However, GDP measures all economic activity, fighting crime, natural disasters, and environmental depletion, whether or not it contributes to an individual's well-being or a community's progress. GDP also doesn't show how a nation's wealth is distributed. Britain's economy has grown faster than most European countries over the last decade, but this growth has done little to narrow the gap between rich and poor. This is the city of London, the world's leading international business and financial center. It's the richest region in Europe, and many of the people who work here are staggeringly wealthy. Yet just over a kilometer from the city, many people live in poverty. In the borough of Bethnal Green, almost half the children live in families where at least one parent is out of work. And it's society where only few people get very, very rich and the rest is very, very poor, is not very much sustainable in the long run. The paradox is that although Western countries have got immeasurably wealthier over the last 50 years, many people don't feel richer, and those that have made it are not necessarily happier. But it's only growing for the richer. It's not going for the ordinary working class person. It's getting worse. Having money could cause you more problems. Obviously, it helps an awful lot, but I don't think it does uh, make you happy. Economics professor Lord Richard Layard has written a best-selling book called Happiness. People will tell you that they feel their life is increasingly difficult and stressful. So uh, it's obvious that we've got a kind of false god uh, if we're saying that almost anything is justified if it produces an increase in GDP. GDP is a good way of measuring production, but there's an increasing consensus that new tools are needed for calculating progress, well-being and our ecological footprint on the planet. The European Commission, along with its partners, is working on a new set of indices that seeks to go beyond GDP to take into account social, environmental and economic progress. More and more people are coming to the conclusion that it's not just the quantity of growth that's important, but also its quality. The challenge now is to develop a means of measuring sustainable progress that's robust enough for decision-makers and clear enough for the general public.